Hi guys, you're welcome to the Laurel Studios. We'll be looking at how to create and consume a REST API using Retrofit library in an Android application. I will be focusing on the crude implementation, whereby we'll be having the create, read, update, and delete of data passed to the server. The APIs will be focused on these functionalities. And PHP is the chosen language to write the backend API. This tutorial will be broken down into two segments, that is into two parts. The first part will be the server-side implementation, where we'll be talking about the PHP files and how to configure a database. The second part of the video will be the client side, which will be the Android application development, where we'll be using Retrofit 2 library to call and consume the APIs created. I'll be moving straight to bracket IO where I have uh, the PHP files for the backend. Whereby we'll be talking about uh, the DB config, the DB function, the delete data, uh, the display, the insert data, and the update because this must actually uh, comprise the crude, the create, the read, update, and delete uh, functionality. In our DB config.php, uh, we define the DB host, the user, the password, and the database. What about we have local host, so you can actually configure this uh, based on your server. This is actually written from a live server. You can use a local host to do this, but recommend you to use a live server, which is straightforward. Uh, we have our DB variable. What about you call the MySQLI connect, which is going to actually connect the host, user, password, and database. If false, probably there is an error in connection, it's going to echo the connection. Uh, this takes us down to our PHP My Admin, where we created a database called Retrofit Crude and a table called Personal Detail personal underscore detail in this table we have five columns our id which is an integer data type with 11 length name which is a variable character data type with 55 length age integer with 11 length mobile variable character with 55 length and email which is a variable character with 255 length and the id is auto increment incremented this is the structure of the uh, database schema of this particular API we're going back to bracket IO to explain other files are uh, in the in, in the in the back end we have the function that's DB function and uh, this is going to include the DB config which uh, actually holds on to the connection to the database we have the insert data function. What about we have the four parameters, the name, age, mobile, and email variables. Now, as the parameter passed into this function, we call on the global DB uh, variable. Is a global DB. We're going to create a query, a MySQL-like query, which will be passed into the result variable. What is this query going to do? It's going to insert into personal detail the name, the age, the mobile, and email address based on the value passed in from the parameters up there. Or you die. Probably there is a MySQL uh, an error uh, connected to the database. And B, you have to return the result value because you're going to pass this query into the result variable. And it must be returned. We have the display all method or function. This function here, you also call the global DB. Now the query is going to look like this. You select all from the personal detail. That's you're going to call all the details you have from the DB. Pass it into the variable called result, and you return the result. We have another function called the delete data. Now this is going to have an ID as its parameter. You call on the global database because you actually need the database. 
with this. Now the query is going to look like this. Delete from personal detail where the ID equals to the past ID from this uh, attribute or diary if there's an error. Now you need to re return the result of this delete data. We have the last one, which is the update data. You're going to pass in the ID, name, EH, mobile, email, the five uh, fields of the database as the parameters. Now the query is going to look like this. Update personal detail. What about you're going to set the name based on the name passed from the uh, attributes. The same thing for the age, mobile, email, where the ID in question is the past particular ID uh, used or you know, passed as an attribute as well. So the ID is going to have the where clause, which is going to actually make you specify the particular data you are about to update. You have to return this as a result based on the result uh, variable that the query is being stored into. Let's get to look at the delete data PHP. You need a function. Uh, you also need an array whereby you pass this into the response. Now you're going to get the post data. You're going to request the ID, pass it into the ID variable. You're going to check an if statement to set the ID. Now you need to call the delete data function. You pass the ID into it and you store it as the result. Uh, you store this uh, function call into the result variable. Now you're going to check for if the result response is success, you passed one, the message definitely will be successfully deleted. You have to encode this uh, message in JSON, which is the response. Else, if you get an index of zero, definitely it's not successful. Uh, the message is try again. You can uh, modify this to fit uh, the kind of prompt message you get. You need to echo this, you encode this to JSON so that uh, Retrofit will actually read this encoded, uh, JSON encoded values. You know, that is if it is success, successfully deleted message prompts out. If not, try again comes up. Else, that is for the first if statement here. If this ID comes up with an error, it's going to come up with no result found. So if the success index is zero, the message will be prompted that the required fields are missing. You know, you need to encode JSON, the response of the message passed. We have the if statement of the DB is true, my SQLI is going to close up the DB you know, after all these calls might have been done. Let's get to look at the display or PHP. Uh, you have to include the DB function, PHP. Same thing goes for the response where you call on the array, just like the way you did with the delete data. Now you're going to call the display all function from the DB function, pass it into the result. You're going to check this is an if statement here. My SQLI number rows of the results if it's greater than zero. Now you need to pass in the details of the array as a while loop. While the row, you're going to fetch the array of the results. You no, know, because you want to display all data from the database. Now you're going to assign the fields id name age mobile and email based on each row you know that's why you have the row uh variable wrapped around the fields of the name age mobile email and details now you have to array push that's the function called array push uh in php that is actually going to push the details of this uh, call now if the results if success is going to be a successfully displayed message you encode with JSON, else try again comes up. Now, if the parent if, which is the outer if statement field, 
it's going to come up with no results found there's no details found definitely there's no details there's nothing in the database because the mysql number rows results will be greater than or uh, will be less than uh zero definitely now you need to close up the database let's get to look at the insert data you call on the dp function you include this you're going to get the post data you know from the post uh retrofit is actually going to post this from the uh fields that's from the input fields of the xml now you need to request the name you pass it to the name variable the same thing goes for age mobile and email you pass them to the appropriate variables now you check for the name and the age mobile and email so if they are all set, uh, there's going to be an insert data. You call the insert data from the function, whereby you're going to insert the, the name, age, mobile, and email based on the fields passed into those variables. Now, if success, you have the successfully saved, the code to JSON for the response so that there will be a prompt. Else, oops, an error occurred. You know? So you encode also to JSON so that that will be uh, showed gracefully. Now, if this if the outer if statement doesn't run, uh, it's going to actually cause that they require fields or field is missing. Now you have to encode this to JSON as well, so that it's going to prompt gracefully. Let's look at the update data. Now you need to update what you already created on the server. You call on DB function. You no, know, you're going to get the post data. You're going to request. Those fields, the ID, the name, the age, the mobile, email, just like the way you did for the insert data, you pass it to a variables, and you go to check, you set them up, the IDs, the name, age, and mobile, and email. So if they are all set, you're going to call the update data function. From the DP function, you pass in those variables as the parameters. Now, if the result is successful, it's going to say successfully updated, else an error occurred. Now, for the outer if statement, if it doesn't run, it's going to say the required fields or field is missing. This is going to actually encode to JSON and get the response prompted gracefully. Now, we've covered uh, the PHP files involved in actually creating your data to the server, updating it, uh, deleting as well, and uh, you know, it's going to you know, read it, which is actually going to call on all those data from the database. I hope you understand this. This is the server code. Uh, you should get yourself acclimatized with this. You no, know, I'm actually using PHP because uh, a lot of uh, server codes uh, or a lot of PHP developers are out there, you know. So I would like you to get yourself acclimatized with this. And if you're new to PHP, you can lay your hands on different uh, tutorials online so that you can actually get yourself uh, equipped with uh, writing PHP codes and understanding how PHP actually relates with the database and actually. How it, uh, how it flows. In the second part of this video, we'll be moving straight to Android Studio, where we'll be uh, calling the retrofit library and uh, actually consuming these APIs you know, and actually getting them uh, used. After you might have uh, written these and you have your DB config, the DB function, the delete data, the display all, insert data, update data, PHP, you need to up load all these to the server which this is my server where uh, you need to upload uh, the source files of the backend you know actually created the folder with profit crude if you notice I have the DP config the B function the delete data display all the insert data the update data PHP files all in my directory so you actually need that directory because you'll be Having your base URL from uh, 
uh, in the retrofit scroll and uh, you have the endpoints to different uh, PHP files because they are actually going to be doing different things. You know, you need to ins create the data, you need to uh, insert it, which is the insert data, you need to uh, call it by displaying it, that is display all PHP. When you need to update that same data, you call the update data PHP. And when you need to delete uh, what you actually have, you call the delete data PHP. Thank you very much for hanging out with me throughout the session. And stay tuned for the second part of this tutorial because we will be having the concluding part of this uh, great uh, video, which is very, very useful for all Android developers. that will be working with APIs and you'll be using retrofit library to actually achieve this feat. Thank you once more. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel.